Hello everyone. Uh, in this video, I am going to be talking about AWS cloud formation. Uh, this is a topic that fascinated me a lot when I was pre uh, preparing for my developer associate exam and uh, kind of scared me a lot as well because the, um, the questions that I was doing on the practice exams were so you, the, you know the templates and everything the the whole concept looked so um out of my grasp uh, but at the same time i felt like this is a thing i want to master for some reason i don't know why and in my quest of mastering that cloud formation you know i, I looked at several pieces of code and explanations and videos and you know still i got some um some tips from here and some tips from there but still all the templates that I saw, the example templates were um, very complex. Uh, had a lot of things going on at the same time, and you know had a lot uh, to understand you know, as as a big chunk. So what I uh, did was I wanted to understand cloud formation um, from the simplest simplest idea and build up from that um, that point. So my goal was to make the simplest of things first and build on from from that point so um i i this i'm still on that quest and so far i've progressed a little bit and i am going to be making more videos but this is the first video on cloud formation and let's get started uh, okay so aws cloud formation is infrastructure as a code service or process or um um you know, uh, a technique that is provided by Amazon Web Services. Now, uh, you can, um, it's one of the ways to provision infrastructure on AWS. You know, you can do it through console, through uh, SDKs like Bodo3 in Python and JavaScript. There's JavaScript SDK and Java SDK. Uh, there's uh, CLI command line interface uh, which I have some videos about um, you can check that out but this is the fourth way of doing things and the interesting thing is that this is a you have templates you know you have templates in cloud formation so AWS cloud formation is a service that gives developers and businesses an easy way to create a collection of related AWS resources I highlight the term resources because resources are the things that we will create okay so resources and provision them in an orderly and predictable fashion now very good definition if you you know break it down so is a cloud formation is a service that gives developers and businesses or architects uh, an easy way to create a collection of releases related aws resources by resources once again we mean EC2 instances, VPCs, RDS databases, anything, you know, anything that we will create normally through console or CLI, those are the resources that we will be creating in AWS cloud formation. And we'll provision them in an orderly and predictable fashion. And how, how is that possible? You know, how, how does that happen? So first, let me, you know, go through this slide. What can developers or architects now do with AWS cloud formation that they could not before? So CloudFormation automates and simplifies the task of repeatedly and predictably creating groups of related resources that power your applications. Creating and interconnecting all resources your application needs to run is now as simple as creating a sim single EC2 or RDS instance. Now, you know, I, I see this as, um, as um, you know, you can, uh, how, I, how I understood this was when you're making um, a, a brick, right the brick that builds houses that that goes on a wall so you don't you don't create individual bricks you know you have a template that you put the the soil or the concrete whatever and you put that in the template and you dry it up and there's a brick for you you don't go on individually creating the bricks anymore you know sometimes there's you know there's automation and when you make one thing over and over, there's no need to make that thing from scratch. 
there is ways to do it from a template and cloud formation is the same thing but you can create an entire infrastructure some companies have their entire infrastructure in a cloud formation template so with a template you can build a lot of things with just a template you put some commands on a CLI or you use the cloud formation um, console in your AWS console to create by just using a template um, so what new concepts does AWS cloud formation introduce so like I said the template is a JSON or a YAML format text-based file that describes all the resources that we will be deploying to run our application or and the the next part is the stack the stack is the set of resources that we will create and manage um, the, you know the temp the template will create the stack the stack is our goal template is um, is our um, you know template <laughs> template is our uh, way of reaching that goal so the stack is what we will get by using the template now once again template is a JSON format text-based file um, now one thing to remember and that's very important is that if all the resources you know are not created properly or a process called rollback will occur and none of the resources that are created will stick for example if in a template I have a template that I want to create an EC2 VPC security group but let's say the security group gets created but the VPC that my EC2 will be it's not created there's a failure in creating the VPC then what will happen is that everything will be deleted including the already provisioned security group so there's a rollback unless everything is done properly and when that happens you don't have to worry about deleting whatever is built now this will make all sense when we actually go and do the lab but stick with me for a couple of more slides what are the elements of AWS cloud formation template so once again JSON formatted or YAML formatted text an optional list of template parameters now this is something that we will be doing probably in the next video uh, we might have some um, some examples of parameters but um, I tried to not include parameters as much uh, in this in this video because we want to start simple but anyways it's optional Para parameters are optional uh, a list of output values that are also optional you know this uh, something like if you want to get the DNS name of the EC2 instance we um, created or the IP address of the EC2 instance so that we can jump right away by opening up the web server then we we ask for output after the stack is created but this is also optional the other optional thing is list of uh, data tables that is used to map um, AMIs or whatever to a cert to certain list of values so for example if I'm in the um, you know if if the AMI is if the region is uh, US East I want to say I want to create uh, you know this this and this AMI if the region is US West I want to use this AMI and this is because AMIs are different by region you know Linux uh, and uh, an Amazon Linux AMI has a different uh, number in US East, US West, and Asia. It's different in every single region. They're not similar. The number of AM, the the AMI ID is not the same. So um, now the thing that's highlighted here, the list of resources and their configuration values. This is the only thing that's required because we want to create the resources. If we don't create the resources, then what are we doing? Nothing. So resources is the only thing that's required to be in the template and obviously a template file for format version number this we see this in every single template but so far there's only one format and 
uh, this is optional as well so in the future there might be a different format version and at that point it might be more relevant to include the the number but for now it's not important and finally we come to the uh, actual uh, skeleton of the template so, so for example a template would be something like this a template version format um, number version date you'd have something like 2010 blah 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 in here uh, description description is just to help you with uh, understanding what's happening uh, parameters like I said is optional uh, parameters is something like if I have uh, resources uh, such as EC2 instance a parameter could be the subnet that I want to create this in but if I don't have a parameter I could just hard code the subnet value in the resource section and I don't have to use the parameters but with parameters what you can do is you can make the template reusable with different um, in different scenarios different parts and you know you can make it a lot more reusable whereas if you don't use parameters you know it's it's only usable very in very few instances in very few cases so parameters it's a very good practice but we will be building up to that point and at, in the beginning we won't be using parameters at all maybe few that's just hard-coded and we won't be putting them when we uh, deploy the stack uh, mappings like I said mappings is used to map AMI to uh, the region and stuff like that I might have an example that I'll show you briefly but we won't be doing this in the lab in the first in the, this part of the video resources is the only thing that's required resources will be uh, EC2 instance VPC security group that's part of the required only part of the required only part that's required in the template condition something like only create a VPC if the security group uh, well only create the security group if the VPC is successfully created you know I don't want a security group if there's um, un I mean unless the VPC is created or something like that you know only create an EC2 instance if this happens so it's like if else okay so it's like depending on this do this something like that outputs for the same thing you know if I provision an EC2 instance to be a become a web server in the output section I might want to output the IP address of that EC2 instance so this is the basic format like just the skeleton of the template an actual template might look look something like this uh, template version 2010.99 description deploy a simple Amazon Linux instance and, uh, and allow SSH parameters uh, like I said in the key name here um, the let me try to zoom this um, okay I don't know so a file okay so let me try to zoom this quickly go there okay so in the pr parameters you see the default when I have a parameter with a default value I don't have to enter anything in when I'm deploying the template if I don't have a default value then when I deploy this the template then I have to include uh, for example key name in this in this case okay so if I have a default value I don't have to include a key name when I'm deploying the template if I don't if I have a default value I don't need to do anything the resource section in this section we are creating a simple instance that's the name of the resource we are creating this is just anything you can put simple instance or complex instance whatever you want you know it's just a name now the type is AWS double colon EC2 double colon instance this is saying that we want to create an EC2 instance this is the naming convention properties key name ref key name so when we say ref key name it's going to reference the name of key name the key name is right here that's in the parameters and since it has a default value we're good to go we don't have to put the parameters when we deploy the template uh, network interfaces this is the networking part group set is reference simple instance security group that's right here we are creating that also uh, type is security group properties you know I'm saying this is the description saying enable SSH VPC ID VPC I'm hard coding the VPC ID so the security group will be for the VPC VPC 7C5 security group ingress this is the uh, port 22 that's coming in um, and the cider is from anywhere outside the 
you know, from the outside world, port 22, from port 22. And, you know, this is like a basic template. There's a, a lower part that I didn't include in this temp in this um, slideshow, but that's it, guys. This is the slideshow, and I will be doing a lab in, uh, in the next section. Uh, so we let's get started.